Good morning and welcome to the midweek devotion from Trinity United Methodist Church. My name is Lisa and it is my joy to help us uh, go into God's Word this morning. Uh, I'm going to take just a couple of seconds and put the words to our opening song into the comments. On Wednesday mornings, we sing an old school gospel song. And uh, we look at a piece of scripture together and we pray together. Uh, this is an interactive time, so feel free to uh, use the smiley faces and the thumbs up and the hearts. Feel free to leave a comment. Uh, those are all very, very welcome and encouraged. Uh, also, feel free to interact with one another. Uh, that's also very much encouraged. So our, our opening song this morning is There is a Balm in Gilead, uh, beautiful, spiritual and uh, so uh, let's let's sing together. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my work's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Don't ever feel discouraged Cause Jesus is your friend. And if you lack for knowledge, he'll not refuse to lend. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. If you cannot preach like Peter, if you cannot pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. Amen. Uh, maybe you are feeling like you're needing a balm this morning. You're needing some tending and some blessing and some medicine for your soul. Uh, there's, uh, it feels very different to think of medicine like, um, you know, maybe something you drink or a pill you take or a shot. That feels very different than thinking about a balm, you know, something that's um, applied uh, to your skin. And uh, I, I imagine tender hands uh, gently applying the balm to a wound. Uh, you know, that's what it talks about. 
uh, to make the wounded whole. And, and so applying a balm to your wound and the wound is not on your skin, it's on your soul. It's on your, your true self. It's on your most tender place. And uh, this is the balm that Jesus provides. Uh, and uh, this idea of woundedness uh, goes with the idea of innocence. Um, the word innocent literally means not wounded. And so, you know, this idea of asking God to return us to innocence, to um, tend our wounds. And Jesus understands wounds, of course, because he was wounded. And, you know, by his stripes we are healed. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful image. There's a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There's a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. And so I'm, I'm so glad that you've joined us this morning for this time of soul tending with one another. Uh, good morning, Christine and Stephen and Anne. Uh, so good to have you with us. Please feel free to uh, let us know that you're here uh, by leaving your name or a good morning in the chat. Uh, this morning we're going to be in Psalm 3, Psalm 3, and uh, it, uh, in my translation of Psalm 3, there's like a little note, and the note says, a Psalm of David when he fled from his son Absalom. So I was like, hmm, what story is that? So I went and looked it up as I was uh, getting ready yesterday. And so uh, here's, here's the story of David and Absalom. Absalom means father of peace. Interesting, uh, because Absalom was uh, not necessarily a man of peace. Uh, Absalom was the third son of King David, so this would be the same David as, you know, David the shepherd boy, David and Goliath, uh, David who became king, David and Bathsheba, same David, uh, major uh, figure in uh, the Old Testament. So Absalom was the third son of King David. David had many children by many wives. Uh, Absalom was incredibly handsome. He had great style and uh, panache. Uh, he had a magnificent chariot that he would ride through the streets of Jerusalem. And before him would run 50 men. So can you imagine this spectacle every time Absalom would be out and about around town with you know, the 50 men running before, that's a lot of, that's a lot of people, you know, the 50 men kind of making a way. And then at, you know, once that got people's attention, then, you know, there would be this magnificent chariot and, you know, this beautiful Absalom, you know, in the chariot. Um, he was one of David's favorite children and he was incredibly popular with the people and he specifically did things in order to be popular with the people. He knew how to work a crowd. He knew how to spin. So uh, Absalom had a half-brother named Amnon, and Absalom had a full sister named Tamar. And Amnon rapes Tamar. You know, there, there is some earthy stuff in the scriptures. Uh, it's, it, you know, it's not all, you know, lollipops and sunbeams, very, very earthy. So uh, Amnon rapes Tamar and Ab Absalom plots for two years to get revenge for his sister. And so uh, one night there's a big party and Amnon gets drunk and Absalom sends his servants over and they murder Amnon. Uh, so after this, Absalom flees, 
and he's gone for about three years before he is reconciled to his father, King David. And so three years of a lot of family ugliness. There's a lot of family ugliness in uh, David's, you know, wives and children. And it's, you know, if you think, oh, you know, I have family ugliness. I can't be a person of faith. Nope. <laughs> There's family ugliness all throughout the families of the scripture. So be at peace, be at peace over that, that you know, family ugliness does not uh, disconnect you or uh, disqualify you from a relationship with God. So thank you, Jesus. Anyway, so once Absalom's back in town, uh, he starts kind of the whole building popularity with the people and, you know, doing things that are going to raise his you know, standing in their sight. And he does this for about four years. And after four years, he declares himself king. David's still alive, <laughs> you know, but Absalom's like, nope, I'm king now. And uh, Absalom organizes revolts and he sleeps with his, father con his father's concubines. You know, I'm the king, so I get the, you know, it's a mess, it's awful. It's awful. Anyway, there, um, at this point, David flees. Uh, David runs this time. And that's where the psalm picks up. A psalm of David when he fled from his son, Absalom. And so with, with all of that kind of in mind, it gives us an idea of where David was when he, you know, sang this song or prayed this prayer. And um, maybe you are finding yourself today in a place of disconnection, a place of dysfunction. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe this feels true to you right now. Psalm 3. Uh, before, before I read it also, you'll notice there's the word Selah, which shows up three times in this psalm. And so we think that means that this would be a point where folks would just stop the reading or singing of the psalm and they would either have silence or they would have uh, just listen to the instrumentalists. Uh, we're, of course, just going to have silence this morning at those parts. So I just, I just want you to be prepared when the silas happen, uh, that they are intentional as directed in the psalm. Okay, so you ready? <sighs> let's, let's read and connect with uh, God through Psalm 3. O Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying to me, there is no help for you in God. Selah. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield around me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cry aloud to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy hill. Selah.
I lie down and sleep. I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. I am not afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Rise up, O Lord, deliver me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek, you break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord, May your blessing be on your people. Selah. There's a couple of uh, beautiful breath prayers in this particular psalm. Um, you know, you could use, I cry aloud to the Lord and he answers me from his holy hill. That's verse four. Um, and so you would uh, Put your feet flat on the floor and open your hands before you and on the breath in you would say um, I cry aloud to the Lord sorry you would think I cry aloud to the Lord and he answers me from his holy hill on the breath out I cry aloud to the Lord on the breath in and he answers me from his holy hill on the breath out. I cry aloud to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy hill. That would be a wonderful one. Um, I Verse five works beautifully. Uh, this would be a great one for like the middle of the night, ever wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, okay, why am I awake in the middle of the night? <laughs> right? So, um, I lie down and sleep. I wake again for the Lord sustains me. Right. Breath in, I lie down and sleep. Breath out. I wake again for the Lord sustains me. You know, or you can just, you know, I lie down and sleep for the Lord sustains me. That would be beautiful too. You know, and take take your time with the breath prayers. Um, take your time. There's, there's plenty of, uh, you know, rise up, O Lord, deliver me, O my God. Beautiful, beautiful prayer. Uh, there's something really powerful and wonderful about uh, praying the scriptures, just using them as the prayer itself or as a jumping off point for prayer. So uh, what of this particular psalm captures your attention, right? We have our process that we use when we look at a scripture. We have some time of stillness and then we do attention, connection, and action. So what captures your attention? Where does it make a connection for you? And what words or action is it calling you to? Is it inviting you to do? You know, how are you incorporating what you're uh, hearing from God in the scripture into your uh, into your everyday life, right? Uh, good morning, Deb Martin. Deb Martin. Uh, yes, thank you for that blessing. Uh, T. Uh, 
T loves There's a Bomb in Gilead. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites. So go ahead and type in what word or phrase is capturing your attention. Uh, where is it making a connection for you in your life, in uh, something you're reading about in the news? Maybe it makes a connection to another scripture. Maybe it makes a connection to a decision you're trying to make. Um, something a friend's going through. Where is it making a connection? And uh, what is it inviting you into? Uh, what action, what words, what next step. So attention, connection, and action. Stephen says, make the wounded whole. Amen. Oh, that'd be a beautiful breath prayer. You know, breath in. Make the wounded whole. Yes. Or on the, on the breath in. Make the wounded whole. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I, uh, what's capturing my attention this morning and making a connection for me is uh, the first couple of verses. I'd like to kind of look at those. Uh, o Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. You know, it can kind of, it can feel that way. It can feel, um, you know, surround, you know, like you're surrounded, uh, you're bombarded. Sometimes it can feel like that. Many are saying to me, there is no help for you in God. And so sometimes there's just too many voices in our lives, right? Too many voices. And uh, it, you know, we're trying to kind of cut through all of those voices, whether they're coming to us from the media, coming to us from family, friends, strangers, uh, pastor, you know, all of these voices coming at us. And, uh, and sometimes the voice will say something and we have to kind of sift it to decide if it's a voice if it's a word that we want to keep or not, if it's, if it's a word of truth and uh, help, uh, you know, we have to sift. And so I, when, I, when I say sift, I think about, um, you know, maybe you're baking and it calls for you to, you know, sift the dry ingredients, uh, you know, in order to make the cake lighter or the bread or whatever you're making. Um, sometimes if you're like panning, you know, like you're in a stream and you, and you pick up the, the junk on the bottom of the stream and, and you kind of sift to see what's going, what's going to stay. And then all the mud and the water and the yuck kind of goes through and you're sifting. Uh, this, you know, there is no help for you in God. So I, I have, you know, if somebody tells me that, I have to sift it. Um, another helpful image is like you take a handful of sand and you let the sand fall through your fingers and, you know, little bits of the sand stays on your hand, but most of it just, um, you know, falls through your fingers, right? So in this instance, there is no help for you in God. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to let that fall through. It's not helpful for me. And I don't believe it's true. It may, you know, the circumstance may be dire. It may be awful. But there is no circumstance which is too dire or too awful for God. Yep. Just doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. And so... Uh, there, there is always help. There is always a balm in Gilead. God is always near. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. So if someone comes up and says, there is no help for you in God, I'm like, well, I don't agree with you. It's, and you know, it, it's kind of hard to say that 
sometimes you know I you know the way you know I'm you know a southern girl and you know conflict avoider and that kind of thing but the truth is not every not everything that comes our direction is helpful and not everything that comes our direction is true so that's why we have the Holy Spirit and we have the gift of discernment and that's why we read the scriptures and that's why we pray so we know what is true and we know what's the voice of God and uh, we can sift we can discern um, so Stephen says deliverance belongs to the Lord beautiful deliver me O oh my God in verse 7 and deliverance belongs to the Lord in verse 8 absolutely there is help there is deliverance in God Christine says do not be drawn into the cynicism of there is no help beautiful Wow Wow the cynicism of there is no help right there's you know and underneath that cynicism is a despairing right there is no help there's a fatalism in there is no help and uh, and we don't need to be drawn into that you know back to back to David and Absalom can you imagine having your beloved child rebel against you in this way uh, you know murdered a sibling and um, then uh, you know was kind of restored after several years and then kind of built up this following and you know it was a coup the the pain of that right and so you know David had been through a lot and had had many voices all along the way say different things to him and uh, so there is no help for you and God I wonder I wonder where that voice came from if it was somebody who was with David as they were fleeing or if it was Absalom's voice maybe it was something Absalom had said to him um, Wow Wow you know David you've blown it too far look at what happened to the kid you raised uh, and David's like nope nope there is there is deliverance deliverance belongs to the Lord rise up O Lord and deliver me O my God right absolutely let's uh, let's start uh, our prayer time with rise up O Lord deliver me O my God that would be a great place to start rise up O Lord deliver me O my God rise up O Lord deliver us O my God uh, deliver us from falsehood and fear uh, deliver us from thinking we are disqualified because of our sins and poor choices and mistakes deliver us O oh God from those who would do us harm deliver us O oh God from evil and injustice and oppression uh, deliver us O oh God from those who want to grab power and do evil deliver us O oh God from our displacement from what feels usual and grounding uh, deliver us O oh God as we flee and wander in the wilderness deliver us O oh God from disease and 
um, unemployment deliver us, O oh God, from hopelessness and despair. Deliver us, O oh God, from isolation and estrangement. Deliver, how would you finish that sentence? Deliver us, O oh God, from, deliver us, O oh God, from, how would you finish it? Deliver us, O oh God, from, Deliver us, O oh God, from racism and injustice. Deliver us, O oh God, from uh, everything that wants to tear us apart. Deliver us, O oh God, from exhaustion. Deliver us, O oh God. Rise up, O oh Lord. Rise up, O oh Lord, in your healing and your saving and your building of community. Rise up, O oh Lord, in truth and goodness and light. Rise up, O oh Lord, in love and unity and belonging. Rise up, O oh Lord, in provision and safety and understanding. Rise up, O oh Lord, in meaning and purpose and gifting. Rise up, O oh Lord, in resurrection and new life. Rise up, O oh Lord. Let's join together in praying the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We close our time together by singing uh, a song called Bind Us Together. I'm going to uh, put the words in the comments so that we can all sing it. There we go. Please join me in singing it. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together in love. There is only one God, there is only one king there is only one body that is why we sing bind us together lord bind us together with cords that cannot be broken Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together in love. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, not just any old peace, but the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Uh, if you are needing someone to speak with, please do not hesitate to reach out uh, to us at the church. You can reach us at trinity at itrinity.org. You can reach us at 941-924-7756. Uh, 941-924-7756. We are 
ready and waiting uh, to walk with you through whatever circumstance you find yourself in.